Good morning, Kingsley Community. Pastor Colleen Merman here coming to you with another daily devotion for Wednesday morning, December 6th. Yes, got it right. 2023, and I broke out the buffalo plaid. I had a buffalo plaid shirt on yesterday. Actually, these are shirts my daughter wore when she worked at Target, and she says, I don't want these anymore. So I'm like, I'll take them. So getting good wear and tear out of her shirt. So, and it is Christmassy. Today is the 6th. So remember, if you're reading the Gospel of Luke throughout the 24 days of, uh, before Christmas, you should be on chapter 6. So, O Holy Night, Daily Bread, free. Karen Huang, she is concentrating on Matthew 1, verse 23. They will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So with us is Karen's devotional, and she writes, On a Christmas morning years ago, I stood by my dad at the foot of the stairs and saw the sadness in his face. The effects of dementia were progressing. He realized he's ne he'd never again climb those stairs and enter the room he'd share with my mom all those years. Our family entered a season of waiting, waiting for the disease to remove dad's voice and thinking, waiting for the moment when his eyes would tell us he didn't know who we were, waiting for the endings to come. That Christmas, I found hope in the song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. It's about waiting. The Israelites had been waiting for the Messiah to come, wondering if he really would. Their waiting, however, wasn't in vain. Jesus was born into our world to save us from sin. His birth, the fulfillment of prophecy hundreds of years before. The virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us, said the prophet Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Jesus' birth redeems the endings in our life. His presence strengthens us as we wait for them and journey through them. God was with my dad the day he looked up at the flight of stairs, and one day he will be with us forever. He's the end of our painful waiting, the end of all our endings. God is with us. Matthew 1, 23. So how does the truth of God's presence with you transform your seasons of waiting? So um, this is a very sad story, but all too real for many people that I know that are taking care of elderly parents, um, ones that have dementia or um, bodies aren't working anymore. And it's just a waiting game, a waiting time until um, they're gone. And uh, this one, this person, Karen's dad with dementia, um, waiting for the time when he wouldn't recognize her, waiting for the time when um, he wouldn't be able to speak or think anymore. And it's it's very sad to see. You see these brilliant people that were CEOs or um, lawyers or doctors or whatever and watch this devastating illness of Alzheimer's and dementia just take their brilliant minds. Um, it's very difficult, very difficult for them when they realize it's happening and then for the family when they no longer realize it's happening, but their loved one doesn't recognize them anymore. So how does Emmanuel, that word, God with us, that the prophet Isaiah prophesied about in, you know, um, 500, 600 years before Jesus was ever born, God with us, how does that get you through life? How does that help you along those times of struggle and waiting and waiting for answers, waiting for, it could be anything you're waiting for. It could be waiting for test results. It could be knowing the test results, waiting for an operation coming up, serious one. Maybe it's waiting for answers from the doctor. Um, could be lots of things. Uh, we wait. That's what Advent is all about, is we wait for Jesus' return again, his second Advent, where he will come and be with us again in a physical way presence way. Right now he's with us through the power of the Spirit, through those who put their faith and trust in um, God the Son, which means therefore Son of God. Um, God's with us. So how does that transform your season and your time of waiting? Because there's an end for all of us. And um, some of us know what that end is sooner than others. Um, but there is an end. So how do we live knowing we will have an ending. Do we live faithfully waiting for Christ like um, Isaiah did? You know, even when it was difficult to believe that that prophecy would come true, it did 500 years later, 600 years later, probably 500. 
even while knowing that life is full of endings, why can't you still look to the future with hope? Because as believers, we know that death is not the ending. Jesus defeated death on the cross. And when he rose again, through the power of this God, the Spirit, um, we know that death is not an ending, but a beginning. A beginning of life eternal with Christ. So Emmanuel is a big word. And we hear it in songs, O come, O come, Emmanuel. O come, O come, God be with us. And God says, I have, I've sent my son. And I've left the spirit of God in you through those who believe and I will come again. So um, even if your ending is sooner than some, uh, and it looks like it's coming soon, know that Emmanuel is with you. God is with you. And what that means is that God being with us will give us what we need at that moment. If it's if we're afraid of death, he will give us that reassurance that we'll see our loved ones again and he will be with us and he will send his angels and I believe sometimes he even sends loved ones along with the angels to welcome them into heaven. Um, I also believe that um, through faith in Christ, we are immediately with Christ uh, when we die. So just like the thief on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise, not later on today you will be with me in paradise and so um we know that that thief on the cross believed in jesus and um was with jesus all he had to do was see jesus next to him so the power of the spirit was working through uh god the son and god the spirit to show that thief on the cross the way to salvation was through his son he truly knew he was the son of God dying on the cross. So he believed with all his heart and asked him, you know, to remember him. All he asked to do, all he asked was, please remember me when you go into your kingdom. And that's, that was the, that was, that was the words of faith. Plus Jesus knew his heart because he could, you know, being the son of God, he could tell the heart of the person. And, um, I, I just think it's such a simple way of getting to know Jesus is remember me, Jesus. Don't forget me. I'm here and I'm going through a tough time. Be with me. Amen. Thank you for what you've done. I believe in you. And you know, however you want to say that, say it, pray it, talk it out loud, tell a friend and watch him pray for you. So, um, Let's thank God not just for you know, we can thank God just for being God, which is we really should every single day, but for being with us, for actually taking on um, skin, for actually coming into our world and becoming one of us, a human being, to die on a cross for sin and death and defeating death. That's how he did it. Uh, but also being fully human and fully man and fully God at the same time to be able to show us what the invisible God looks like. So let's pray and let's thank God for being with us at all times and remembering that he is with us and how that should change our life forever. Dear Jesus, thank you for being my Emmanuel. Thank you for being with me and giving me exactly what I need when I need it. Thank you for our world, Lord. Thank you for us being able to know that we do have an ending, but that our ending is with you. And so we give you thanks. Help us to share that good news today with someone that you bring into our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I will see you tomorrow. In the meantime, have a good day.